just a reminder, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it holds no record of love. It does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always loves, and always persists. And above all, love never fails. So, today we have a special guest with us, none other than Quayon Duncan, and I would allow him to introduce his wife. Hi guys, it's a pleasure being here with you today. Um, as everywhere he said, my name is Quayon Duncan, and my immediate right this is my young, beautiful, long and long sing wife, Kimberly Duncan. Well, see you hear from him. Young, beautiful, flouncing and bouncing wife, right? So today we are here to help us discuss how to go about planning for your wedding, right? Planning for your wedding could be a bit tedious, it could be hard. I advise you guys to get your notebook, your pen, your crayon, your marker, your painting brush, everything and paint load, right? So before we go into the topic, I would just like Leon to just share with us a little about me and his wife, how they met. So give us a little briefing, right? Um, I remember it as long as it was, I guess, later. But before I actually say that, my wife actually grew up in the neighborhood where I came from Lebanon. I'm originally from Lebanon. When I came this way, Now we're going to go straight into 
our first question to you guys. How did you go about planning your wedding list or preparing the amount of persons that you wanted for your wedding? Did you select persons on your own or did the persons that attend your wedding were mostly selected by relatives or or was it the persons that you actually wanted at your wedding? Um, that became very, very easy for us after we, we, we decided on where we wanted to have our wedding. Uh, and the reason it became very easy for us because we, we came down, the, the place could have only accommodate 70, 76 persons. Right? So after that, it became very easy, easy for us. So we decided, one, to keep uh, keep a bit quiet on it, because the, mo the more you know, basically, the more people know, it don't cause, you know, feelings and so on, people go, that really didn't bother us, yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's our day, it's our wedding. Uh -huh. And so when we decided that we wanted to keep our wedding at, at the location, um, we started looking at family force. Okay. And so, it, and that wasn't even 76 persons, we split that, we split it in half. Mm -hmm. And then that still wasn't enough. Right? So I ended up <laughs> well, the, the day before, I ended up stealing some a bar. from our, <laughs> from our <laughs> relative. <laughs> right? So um, yeah, I ended up stealing from her. Uh, also because her uh, parents decided that since the venue could have only accommodated 76 persons, they were going to have a, a separate reception from that reception. Our, our parents, right? Yes, our parents. Yeah, I think there's something with people <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the guest list always have to be <laughs> yes. Especially, Especially when it's the, not necessarily a forced mark, but it's the forced child for the home getting married. Yeah, yeah the parents always want to send, send their daughter off with a man. Yeah. And so uh, I end up stealing at least maybe about 20 more <laughs> from her because I, I, I said that hey, since there's going to be a separate reception, um, your family can go there, right? <laughs> so it's best to give me some more. <laughs> so I end up stealing most from her. Uh -huh. um, so we sat and we decided, uh, I called some names, uh, she did a list um, of her family and I did a list of mine and then we put it together. And then that's how we came up with our guest list. Okay, great. And Jeffrey, I actually think that's a good tip in terms of like you know when you when you come up with a guest list okay. and um you you don't want to make everybody you know like your friends and family specific family members and friends to feel bad. So the first thing you should actually do is book your um, reception hall, and from going how many person it, it could accommodate then you would be able to sit here and at the end of the day this this reception hall could only hold a hundred people, yeah. 76 people, so I have to stick to 76. Right. So well feel bad, feel bad. <laughs> right. It's not about the amount of people there at your wedding, but is ensuring that it is, you know, something that you guys can look back and be happy with your surrounding. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right? And on that on that one there too, um, one of the things that I learned from the 76 day venue from us is that even though it was 76 persons you know, that the building could accommodate about four or five others still showed up mm -hmm. right so we, we still have to make room for oh, that yeah, yeah. yeah a little extra because even though, I think I had a call yeah. right exactly <laughs> so if your wedding is not a invitation for us then end up then expect to have some extra people mm -hmm. yeah. even if they just stand mm -hmm. Outside yeah. or they stand at the door, they're yeah. going to show up. Yeah. Definitely, they're going to show up. So, second question is, um, what are some of the things you guys have done to ensure you didn't overspend on your wedding budget? Okay, so one of the things was the guest list, of course, because I have a large family. Like I come from a family that's really close knit. <laughs> <laughs>
you're spoiling me. Aww. I feel bad sometimes. <laughs> but uh, but I, I actually didn't want that, so we decided to find one. I found a really beautiful one. And um, we rented it. Um, we, instead of you know having to cook our own food, and um, the, the, the place where we kept the reception as well, um, we provided some of the beverages instead of them having to give it to us. You know, we provided some of the like champagne. That was what? Um, but that's basically it. You know, we cut down on the amount of people coming to our wedding. Um, we provided some of the beverages, and you know, I kept my wedding. Also, also on that that note, dear. Um, I just want, want, want you guys to know that even when planning for a wedding, I uh, want to encourage you guys to plan for a wedding and not a bashment. Indeed. Two different things there, yeah. right? Because a wedding, if you plan for a wedding, remember on that day, it's, it's just the two of you, right? On the, the day after the wedding, when you guys get up from that lovely on the moon, you got to eat reality. <laughs> you got to pay bills. Yeah. You know, the man now, he is like he has a, a whole child that he has to look over but it's his wife so you gotta look look after his wife you know and meet all her needs and everything right so and also with, with budgeting um don't worry about who who can vex don't worry about who who ain't gonna come and then after they can talk to you yeah. and all those things because uh when planning a wedding when those things cross your mind you, you tend to want to go deeper into your pocket yeah. right? because you want to please, please people, everyone, yeah, right? Yeah. You want you want to please them. Not necessarily you want them to be there, but mm -hmm. you know that hey, this person very touchy. They will come. Mm -hmm. They can want have an attitude with me. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you, you want to give them an invitation for them to come. Mm -hmm. So it's a big difference between planning for a wedding and having a bashment. Next question: How did you go about picking your bridal? Party. I know bridal party is a very <laughs> important part. So um, I had two of my sisters attend the wedding, and honestly, all the other people were from him, and a lot of them were youth from the church. And so he um, he has this thing for young people. I don't know where he came from. Maybe that's his car. But um, he has this thing for young people, and you know he's always able to relate to them so well. And so he gets along with them, and. Um, most of them, most of the, our bridal party were his people, and I just had my two sisters and one cousin, I believe, and my niece as well. But everybody else was him. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it was actually, it was actually a, a breeze for me because, um, as she said, the youths from the church, the entire, all of them was from the wife department. So all I have to say was, hey, I get to marry who wanted. <laughs> Everybody yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my guys, um, the guys who were in, uh, some of the ladies, the ladies they were, were in, and so it was a goal, goal for me. So, so like how many persons were in your bridal party? <laughs> we had um, average uh, about 50, 50 pairs? 15 pairs. Yeah. So wait, there's like 30 persons, <laughs> right? Wow! Yeah. And 76 Six persons. Yeah. 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 Yes, adults. Fifteen adults. We still had about uh, five, five kids. Yeah, three, five, three to five. Oh. Five peers. Uh -huh. So half of the wedding, right, were bridal party. Bridal party. Uh -huh. So you could you could could tell from that how tedious it was to uh -huh. pick the rest of the family to be there. Yeah, exactly. So uh -huh. this this is exactly what I was. This is you know wrong. What I actually wanted to. So, what are some of the qualities you actually look yeah, out for yeah. when picking your bridal party? That was easy. Yeah, yeah. We chose persons, uh, at least I chose persons that I knew for a fact that if I need anything in my marriage or counseling or despite that they're young, some of them are even younger than I am, they have my back, right? Before I got married, they have my back. And still to this day, they have my back. Still. So that's how we end up choosing um, that, that amount of persons uh, because we know, I know for a fact that they, like I said, it was like half of the youth ministry, right? And we are pretty close, we're very close. So I chose the, especially the guys, right? Especially the guys. You know, we we like to get and everything. So I made sure that the, they were here in support of me as I would be in support of them. So when planning a, planning a bridal party, um, you don't just go for Mutal. 
and who sharp and who thick and who thin and you try to match them together. It doesn't matter you, you choose persons who you know is going to be there for you. And that's what a wedding is all about. That's the kind of people that you want around you. Especially because a bridal party is it's the second thing. No, the third thing, as far as people just come to see the bride. Yeah. <laughs> then they want to see if the groom suits the bride. <laughs> and then they look at the, the, the way of the clothing of the bridal party. Yeah. Right. So those are those are three oh, main yeah. things. <clears throat> really <clears throat> food. <laughs> food. <laughs> food. <laughs> I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. The three most important yeah. things, right? Because yeah. even though some come to look at those three things, they come with the food on their minds. Yeah. Right. You know, when we got married and we were picking a bridal party, one thing we look for is person that will continue to support us. Yes. Right? One of the things, um, for me, right, I wanted five things. Yeah. But uh, members oh, that yeah. we like, admire, right? <laughs> uh, there's there's a woman with me, right? <laughs> so you know, should we we increase it a bit? So we end up getting I think it's nine pairs. Yeah, nine pairs, right? Yeah. Nine pairs we end up getting. So that was eighty persons. The nine pairs that we had, we ensure that we pick person that we know we can pray with. That we can call for support, not only physical but spiritual support. Persons that can hold us accountable. Mm -hmm. Right? It's important when picking a bridal party that you have persons that can hold you accountable. A lot of weddings, and I see persons like with some with 40 pairs, some with 30 pairs. Yeah, a lot of persons yeah. wow. in the yeah. bridal party. I've heard that. Yeah, especially in those country areas. Right, they're, they're the bridal party are usually big. Yes. Right. So, and most of them, that most wedding time done, you know, a lot of weddings when they're finished, you know, there's still responsibility after. Yes. And sometimes you can't take care of the responsibility uh -huh. because yeah. you expense yourself on exactly. getting a big bridal party, a yeah. big guest list, yeah. and also you got to remember your bridal party should be in your guest list. Yes. Yeah. A part of your guest list. Yeah. They're not That's separated right. from it. Yeah. Right? Because it's like this. I read an article that said that you measure your guest list by a plate of food. Correct. A plate of food, uh, a wedding plate of food averages like around three thousand Guyana dollars. Correct. Which will be anything around fifty dollar US. Yes. Fifty yeah. dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty dollar yeah. US. So it, 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 it is a lot of money. Right, to so feed over 400 persons, yeah. <laughs> 300 persons, and these things. It's important to get a bridal party that supports you. Yeah. Right? I know a lot of times we try to put family in your bridal party, your cousins. Yeah. It's cousins that you don't even know yeah. in your bridal party. And your bridal party is also important for your photography. Uh, right? A lot of times you big bridal parties is very hard to control them because you know females may come from oh my foot are thin right some of them want to smile you know they want to be happy and because of the way they are the bride and groom sometimes began be, uh, become frustrated yeah. right and then you know their facial reactions start changing so you would not get happy memory so our final question is how did you deal with the person um, committed or plan to contribute something to your wedding? Uh, that there, let me just answer that in two parts. First thing is, it's your wedding. And so, generous family members, once they hear that you're getting married, they will get all excited. And especially if there's, there hasn't been a wedding in the family in a long time. And then they're going to jump up and say, hey, I can give you two chicken. Hey, I can give you the drinks. I can give you the bar. But yeah, you, you have to remember that this is your wedding. Despite their saying that they will give you this, I would advise you guys do not depend on that. Yeah. Right? Do not depend on that. Plan your wedding. Uh, book your place. Set your uh, make your budget out for everything. Right. But it, right. Exactly. So, but for us. Um, 
My wife is not a person who can handle a lot of pressure. <laughs> no woman! <laughs> not me too, girl! Not <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, You know, and a lot, a lot of stress. Right? So what, what I did, because planning a wedding can be really stressful. Yes, right? it is. Um, it wasn't for me, because I can handle uh, pressure and I can handle some stress at a certain level. <laughs> right? To be honest. So what I did, it's like I took over all the burden and all the, you know, the running around and the responsibilities for our wedding, right? In other words, I went to the, the seamstress, I went pick the car, all I'm doing is sending her photos, asking her, you want this, you want this, and like that, and then come, you know, with her, right? So it's like I took everything on to, to make this day special for us. So when a family member would call me and say, hey, I want to get the married trips. Yeah, man. I don't know how they are. How they are. Yeah, no. Right? No, I don't know. Yeah, I said, so, um, so no problem. Um, oh, yeah. Just let me know. I'm going I'm to send a couple hundred dollars to you. Or I'm, I, I can buy the drinks. Or I can buy all the champagne yeah, for yeah. you. He said, okay. No problem. So like about two months before our wedding, because every time they call me, although I am planning based on the money that I have, that, that we have, I'm still writing their names down. Yeah. So two, like two months before the wedding, I started calling. I went to you call me, <laughs> right? I call, like I say, you know what? Um, we start putting things together early, so we want to pay them for some stuff so we can get it cheaper and stuff. So remember that you promised us this. Um, when are you going to do for us? So okay, give me a call next week. Uh, so I, I'm not faking that. I'm asking you say, which day next week can I call? Uh, by Wednesday, you better believe. Next Wednesday, I'm calling. Right, so with, with, that, with saying that, I'm saying, despite that they're, they're the promises that they're going to promise you, you still plan, yeah. right, according to what you have. Yeah. So should they back out, yeah, you, you can, you know, yeah. you already have that deal. Yeah. So once you have what they say, you scratch that oh, yeah. off of your list. Mm -hmm. so you plan your wedding, take it, Uncle Frankie can send this money, then Bob. Um, some situation end up happening to Uncle Frankie and he can't send it. Yeah. Then no, you, you're oh, left yeah. with yeah, not only the parents, you're left with all of these expense yeah. and burden to carry. Yeah. Yes. Right? So when your wedding is finished, instead of you enjoying your own yeah. thing, you know, getting my you your wedding is finished and you're still left with a lot of expense. Yes. Yeah. So now we're about to go in a gate into a little game. The game is about to begin. This game will be a game that will help us to see who know each other best. Right? It will be the guys versus the females. Right? And you know the usual. The guys will definitely be winning. Right? So we will be asking each other questions that we expect our partners supposed to already know about us. All right. Yeah. right? And we're going to see who will answer the most question. It will be you guys who will decide on if the males won or the females won. So let the games begin. The females will be hitting us with the first question. Okay. Our first question is, what's our favorite dish? Jeffrey, you answer for me, Koyan, answer for his wife. Mm, our favorite dish. You go first. Well, that's, that's very easy. Um, um, very, very easy. My wife's favorite dish is from rope to soup. <laughs> Pop, 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 pop,
bum 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 is. Where's your favorite food? <laughs> My right favorite food is macaroni and cheese with barbecue chicken.
so, not the exact one. Anyway, if you were to determine <laughs> okay. if that was a valid look, answer, I mean, anything. how do you really get look, not from look, not exercising? Look at our what picture. Do do when look at our picture then, before right? we got married. You see, that is it. You determine if we're lying or not. <laughs> Take right? a good look at that. Take a good look. They blame it us. <laughs> see your question. All right. Our question is What are we more passionate about? This is easy. easy. We get three. We get three. We get three. We get three. Very much easy. You had some fun. <laughs> we gotta get it so <laughs> Yes. Yes, 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 yes,
wow. he was answering to Brexit. Wow. Yes. Yeah. He was technically incorrect. Listen. I, I finished high school in 2012, but he said that I finished grade 6 in 2012, so we can't take that end. Guys, you see some of the things that men have to consistently deal with? Exactly. Right? These type of things men have to deal with. Tell me, my colleagues, do you think I'm right when I said it went to 12? Was I no, correct? Was she finished 2012. I made a, a, a grammatical <laughs> error. Instead of saying four, I said great. Right? If you write that in CXC, you're not getting any marks. I will be marked for the year, at least for the year. I will get something. Don't worry, we still have to answer. I still have to answer. I still have to answer. Are you the wife completed our high school? No, wait, wait. You gotta be careful from primary. Make sure you said four. Don't go to this case. Yes, my beautiful wife completed four, five in high school in the year 2012. Yes, you will determine who won. Okay.
You will channelize your method. You will channelize your method. Which is it? It's gossip. That's why I said it's generic. It's gossip and sin. It's gossip and sin.